Hey guys, welcome back to Pillbox Movies. I'm Hank, and today we're going to be watching the 2008 Japanese family drama Still Walking. This is a film by director Hirokazu Koreeda. Uh, Koreeda has directed such films as Shoplifters, Afterlife, Blow Up Doll, I Wish, and this film, Still Walking. I've only watched a couple of Koreeda's work. I really like it. I resonated a lot with uh, Afterlife, as many people have, I'm sure, and Shoplifters, I think I've said in a previous video, was one of my favorite movies from 2018. 2018 was a pretty good year, at least in terms of the cream of the crop. Still Walking, I believe, focuses on a family reu reuniting for a funeral, if I remember. Um, yeah, that sounds <laughs> like a charged subject. Uh, Truth be told, I have watched like the first, you know, one fifth of this movie and just didn't continue on after that. I know, I know, bad movie watcher, bad movie watcher, whatever, whatever, whatever. But this movie came as a suggestion from one of my Patreons, so thank you, John G, for the suggestion. And yeah, I'm gonna finish it this time. So yeah, let's do that. And before we get started, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. I've once again gotten my headphones all messed up. Of course, of course, of course, Criterion. Of course, of course, of course. And this is an IFC joint. IFC is both a um, film distribution company and it's also a movie theater in New York. <laughs> And you can see this a little bit in both um, Afterlife and in, in Shoplifters, but uh, a fixation on kind of repetitive tasks, on chores. The father's framed as, as kind of emotionally and um, spherically distant. Okay, so the former, the former location of a, a family medicine center, headed by the um, patriarch of the family. I don't think I'll ever, ever, ever release this video in a timely, in a timely manner. But the, there's also a connection. There's also another movie that I watched from this area that features a family clinic uh, that day on the beach. A Taiwanese film. <laughs> and him acting as a, uh, a caretaker or a shepherd for people uh, um, at the end of their lives, like in Afterlife. The patriarch kind of looks like Hayao Miyazaki. Do any of you see that Miyazaki documentary where he's like walking around his neighborhood and stuff? And I think the freeway featured prominently in um, Shoplifters too, if I remember correctly. It was like a, a locus for a lot of kind of um, like extreme events in the family's life. Like when they were running away from uh, the law enforcement, or when the child was taken away. Spoilers! Last Train, <laughs> Train Home is a nice documentary from 2008 about sweatshop workers in China. Ooh, SP. Nice. Or it's not an SP. I'm an idiot. It's a DS. We have the kind of distinct lighting scheme, I'd say, of the Coriata I've seen, of being quite content with underlighting interiors and having this kind of like ethereal, blown out look to the exterior lightings coming in. It's a uh, cost-effective family, saving saving money on lights. Uh, and again, 
framing the the patriarch at a distance. Yeah, sometimes you laugh. That's a kind of like in its own way a brilliantly kind of created idea that um, of writing letters to somebody who won't read them that there are kind of um, inexpressible interior thoughts and emotions that even if we can't express them to the desi desired recipient sometimes we just have to um, we have to express them we have to speak them into the world and I think in a way that is expressed in afterlife too with the kind of um, with the with the movies and with the cherished memories that there are remembrance of a time and a place and a person and even if you can't express that kind of gratitude to that person um, creating the movie replicating the um, the memory is an expression of that gratitude and son is proud like the father. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> I, I love this, for example, though. The, the depiction of the interplay of light and dark in kind of Asian households in film. Because they're not as, like, used to or they don't use, like, um, interior lights as ubiquitously as in a Western household. You have really, really thick darks and piercing, piercing lights. <laughs> Yeah, that's that do be children though. Yeah, I love this view of the interior and exterior of the uh, of the family of the household. This kind of focus on the um, exceedingly dark and spare from the outside view, and then the bright. And, and full from the inside. <laughs> Provides some toothbrushes for the family since they're going to be sleeping over. It feels like polite, but also to a certain degree perhaps impersonal, depending on your relationship with the family. <laughs> And in terms of the hierarchy of the family, they're all working together to contribute to this meal. And the ones that don't contribute are kind of, um, are, are very kind of obvious. The ones who aren't. The father, for example, because he doesn't participate in that, in those activities, because he's the head of the household. But also um, the sisters, husband and children because they're, like, not members of the family, direct members of the family. Oh. <laughs> 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 It's also a story about miscommunication. The, the farmer, the, the neighbor, already was like trusting of them and was already going to extend an olive branch, but they kind of put their, their feelings first.
持ってきてあらいい,いいのにそんなわざわざもうお経曲げてないんだからいやうちのやつはあの中学淳平さんの後輩で当然持ってきて怒られてたまったもんじゃないですよね<笑>あのじゃあ上がって代わりにお線香だけで<笑> I love how light they're treading about all of this stuff they're just trying to be as not frivolous about it but not ponderous about it and you can just feel it hanging on the back back end all these things that they can't say out loud they wait until somebody's outside of the room and then they prattle on as families do as as groups do but there's all these iterations of different things that they want to say out loud but they can't say it to each other just such a beautiful way to shoot a really bright summer day it's just like incredibly dark and cool inside of the house and you only get faint glimpses of how bright and how hot it is outside <laughs> it gives you this constant feeling of something's happening just off of out of frame there's a there's a, a focus to the story and a focus to the frame they engage in the topics that are in the center of this focus and everything on the outside in the periphery they try and ignore as best they can <laughs> Totally doesn't about face for his mom. This feels like a very, very familiar family dynamic to me. The dad literally not saying anything. And in a similar fashion, um, his, his son, um, his stepson, doesn't engage in... Um, in the conversation either, either because he feels like an outsider and as soon as he says something the perspective shifts yeah I, I don't want to get too firm on this idea but I want to see if they develop on it this is just me hypothesizing, but when they've done the reverse shots, the ones looking outside and taking it from their point of view, it, it's always kind of like on a darker thought, on a more morbid or um, honest thought, I guess I'd say. He's not interested at all. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Getting completely bowled over by your dad. This framing with his fucking brother behind him. Oh, that sucks so bad. And it's also from the father's point of view that he's always he always has um, Junpei in sight. Oof, 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 oof. Yeah, I, I love how dark this is. It's so serene. And in its own way, like heart wrenching. <laughs> Okay, so, and we've mentioned the crepe myrtle a second time, so it, it will be established as a central kind of uh, symbol in this movie. The tree that the father felt protective over, the sacred tree. Oh, no. <laughs> really like this idea of I don't know what his stepson's name is, but um that Atsushi is learning about his dad. 
his stepdad when his stepdad was his age. It's a, it's a, sim- a really simple idea and it expressed in movies a lot that um, as an adult to kind of communicate or um, relate to your child, you kind of have to live on the same plane as them. That he, he begins to identify with his stepfather when he hears about how he lived when he was when he was his age, how he interacted with the world, how he went through the same kind of troubles and issues. He can't bear to be in the photo with the with the picture of his son. I don't want to get too morbid about it, but it feels so lively and so fresh and vital outside. And the house, I think the house looks so beautiful on the inside and so quiet and serene. But there is that sense of morbidity to it that it's in in a small way stagnant. And capable of of the same kind of vitality that the outside possesses. <laughs> There's a poster. <laughs> That's also a plot point in that day on the beach. The two movies aren't related, right? Uh, he died, he drowned, saving, trying to save a child. I don't know the symbolism of the flowers, but I'm guessing they're blooming off of the crepe myrtle. And that's why they were mad that they picked the uh, petals off, or the flowers off. We talked earlier about a possible affinity between the the grandson and the fa- and the grandfather. That they both weren't talking at the dinner table. That they both feel kind of um, in a different way alienated from this family. What the grandfather doesn't realize is that his son feels similarly alienated. Ah. That's beautiful. Just the old hands embracing the young. Fathers just suck. I can't believe how much fathers suck. Any good dads in this on the featured on this channel? Is that my bias coming through? Good father and tomboy. Good father. And we'll give them good father for for giant. I really like framing. This is like an entire day over this meal. This prolonged meal. It's nice to go for a walk. Because she hasn't had the opportunity to talk with her son yet. Mom's been wanting to talk to Ryo this entire time. Yeah. This is, I mean, it's it's quite obvious, but I do love the opportunity um, Koreeda's work affords you to realize how much beauty there is in life and in the world if we weren't so preoccupied with our little internal dramas. <laughs> And the mother's love of flower arranging again. She could put on lipstick to come make this walk. That's such a nice little touch. 
I really, really love taking this from Atsushi's uh, uh, perspective, really viewing this family for, like, the first time in his life. It's not like any of their behavior is strange, exactly. It's just that it's all new for I don't think they're really that abnormal. They go up a hill, they go down a hill. A little Sisyphean moment. I mean, it's one tough butterfly. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. She'd hate the color yellow because she her son died. Uh that sucks. That sucks. That sucks. That sucks. That's too much. Just little hints, little hints of behavior. Who the fuck is this? The only compliment you can give to a person who has nothing in their life. <laughs> Asking for a job here. Oh, it's the kid! Jesus Christ, Christ, the sweat stains. Judgy, judgy family. And of course, Ryo would make this argument because he's constantly compared to Junpei. Yeah, sure. This is why we don't talk out loud at family gatherings. Oh. Um. The one from the 90s. <laughs> Expressing a little bit of racism in that. Japanese are incredibly uh, nationalistic when it comes to Japanese sumo wrestlers. And so they treat foreigners with a little bit of disdain, or at least peculiar fascination. Akibo, no, that's right. I, yeah, I, I, I don't mean this in a mean way, but I think the movie means it in a mean way that it, it's like they're they're kind of a. Like a gossipy family, they like talking behind other people's backs. I liked in that little, little scene they established kind of their alliances that the grandfather is um, aligned himself with Atsushi and the grandmother is aligned herself with, with Ryo. And the wife is the odd man out. <laughs> Oi. 
All you do is play pachinko all day. <laughs> Grandmother, the, the actress is really good at eating and talking at the same time. Wow, I'm genuinely impressed. She has to keep her little LP in the side, hidden away when the, the father has her, the grandfather has his entire record display out. <laughs> What a perfect opportunity when when your like a strange son comes to visit to have fights with each other. That's the only reason to have the son there, I guess, to yell at him a little and to have fights with each other using him as a proxy. Families are so fucking stupid. Cousin She wants to get out of the house. <laughs> oh my god. So petty. It's got thunder. レコードですか。うん。ちょうどあの頃ですよ。板橋の。広めて欲しくてくださいね、そのままにしないで。ああ。さっき大丈夫聞けるわよって言ったのかさ。あれさ。絶対一人で掛けてんなレコード。いや。それ考えると。Your Late to remark on this, but I love the pleats on the uh, on his wife's blouse. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe go fuck yourself. Nice. It's true. They're just a little bit of more nasty of family than you really want to say. Yeah. I love her knitting without, like, without stopping. It's like she doesn't even have to think about it. She's just so casual and saying something so... So hurtful. So vicious. But at the same time, the actual... Um, motor skill itself, it, it creates a feeling of anxiety. So simultaneously, the task being performed, it's like, is it a casual task? Is it an anxious task? It lives like as, as Schrodinger in both moments simultaneously. <laughs> Wow. 
Yeah, so she not say you. Say, I go for a hero in the car. You got it, son. She does not like that kid. Does she not like Atsushi? Is it because she knows that that the grandfather likes him? And the mother's actually driven a wedge between them, apparently. Yeah, she is. I don't really know about what exactly. Oh, yeah, she doesn't like us, she. Yeah, I I feel bad. Part part of this is because um because the wife uh, has been so nice and so accommodating this entire day, and so to get this slap in the face and like with like no recognition of it, she's just steaming, and the fact that she's had to play subservient and play nice. This entire time, while they're not playing by the same rules, you, Yukari, Yukari. This is a lot more mean spirited than I expected, given the other um, Korea the pieces that I've watched. I understand why they're they're mean spirited from a place of an intense like uh, hurt, but nonetheless, I love this heel turn from the mother though. Uh, just like turns out to be so nasty. You're gonna have to talk to your son if you want to be close to him. Mom, back off. Wow. Wow. Wow, she actually sucks. Wow. I'm like... Usually, from the very brief experience I have, I'm usually on Koreeda's character's sides. Uh, the, the This older generation, I'm very much hesitant about at this point. Oh, the bat. Oh, oh no, the butter. Yeah, that's right. She doesn't want to see it. She doesn't want to see it. Lands on the altar. I also like in this lighting, you can't even tell if it's the yellow butterfly. After this scene of such intense, intense, like, dislike or suspicion cast upon the grandmother character, and then she has such a scene of vulnerability. Phone shouldn't be ringing. How late is it? Was there an accident? He's gonna have to go shepherd her to her death. He'd like to, but he can't see anymore. And he feels intense regret that he can't 
um, act as the shepherd in this case, that he can't help her with her death, see her through to her death. Because he was unable to do it for his son. Intense, intense moments of vulnerability to these characters after giving them such heated, awful scenes. And like, in a little bit of a like a manufactured or contrived way, but in comparison to so much screenplay, so much script writing you'd see otherwise, very, very organic, very sensitive, very genuinely felt. Oh, see, you see how all of their all of their decisions, all of their actions are informed by this single moment. And it doesn't manifest itself in very straightforward ways. It affects like all all of their interactions, all of their deeply held beliefs, their ways of relating to people that they know, people that they don't. Such intense personal loss that each of them has experienced that uh, they can't live in the world in the same way again. And I love seeing Yukari after a day of being so composed and keeping on a, a good face, finally, finally be able to cast it off. パパもちゃんといるのよ。厚氏の中に。厚氏の半分はパパで、半分はママでできてんだから。じゃあ、りょうちゃんはりょう。りょうちゃんもね、これから入ってくんのよ。じわじわっと。Yeah, you know, part of having people in your life is filling yourself beyond capacity. <laughs> and this is, oh my gosh, I want to stop it here because this is the perfect evolution of something that we've discussed previously, <laughs> that um, characters, they have these asides, they have these confederacies where they discuss secrets um, when another character is absent and this is an example of a confederacy that the that Yukari and that Atsushi have but they choose to involve um, they choose to involve Ryota in it so even though he's not sure what they're saying they're including him in this moment and that's a means of being honest with him and sharing with him and not being so mean-spirited and petty like all of the characters in this movie have been Very, 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 very elegant screenwriting. I, I'm bowled over sometimes by how uh, efficiently Koreeda chooses to execute on character arcs or character moments. Is he talking to the uh, crepe Myrtle? And he's writing out a letter for somebody, for no one to read, for his dad to read. Oh. The thing that he wanted to ask Ryota was did he want to become a doctor because he wanted to be like his dad because he wants to become a piano tu tu tuner because he wants to be like his dad the cray myrtle tree oversees their family and the tiles are cracked and the f and the house lives in shadows they're walking together hold his hand and the beach was a point of respite too, in shoplifters. Beach is always a, a fun date, you know? If you want a place where most characters in most iterations of most movies or storytelling will 
be less stressed, be not the worst ver version of themselves, it it'll probably be a beach. Not that day on the beach, though. And once again, we have the repeated imagery of walking up and down hills. Elegant. Elegant. That's the only way I can really describe uh, Coriander's work. Excessively, exceedingly elegant. Literally exact same story beat as Shoplifters. Three generations. Finding a place where they can be equals. And she knows, because she has dentures. Really, really, really great character writing. Really, really, really great. I love you. I'll miss you. Oh, the handshake. Oh, God. Asian parents are just so fucking weird. Just so fucking weird. S same plot beat in, uh, <laughs> in Shoffler, just two. Go chase after that bus. <laughs> and they're gonna walk together, and they're gonna walk up the hill, they'll walk down the hill, and life will continue on. Oh, Kurohime. やめろよお前。ああいうこと。けなんかに言ったら感じ。お前に何か。ああ、面白い。クレイメ。エンディア。クレイメの話はそれっきりになった。マザーエンドサン、ウェアモーアンシンクトベイブリアライズ。<笑
these kind of quiet contemplative dramas. Uh, they are incredibly, incredibly well written and really give uh, good actors an opportunity to perform lots of different shades, lots of different characteristics. Uh, whole swaths of humanity, personality, uh, character dynamics enmeshed in a singular human form. Like, so many different facets of a personality encased in these very, very small snippets of these characters' lives. Beautifully, beautifully written work. Beautifully, tremendously written work. Yeah, check out Still Walking. If you've seen it, let me know what you think about it. And thank you again, John, for the suggestion. And remember to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. And until next time, keep watching good movies.